Welcome, BPRO users and content subscribers alike. We are here for our very, very first match analysis, live match analysis with former pro, current broadcast legend, Yes Network highlight man, Ian Joy. He's done a lot with us in the past, but now he's here and we're actually going to go through one of his games as an MLS pro playing for Real Salt Lake. Ian, how are you, man? Doing well, Daniel. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, it's an awesome opportunity. You know, obviously, getting used to the product is is one thing. Learning about the product is another thing. Obviously, sharing you know my feelings on how cool this product is is something completely different. But now, actually breaking down a game I played a part in <laughs> might be a little bit nerve wracking for me. But this is pretty cool. I'm really excited. Now, nah, look, I've I've gone through it. You had a good game. Can't say the same for every single person on the field. It was a tough contest. Uh, this was 2008, so Red Bulls was a really good squad. RSL was a really good squad. You'll see a lot of former national teamers on the field here, uh, both for the United States and for CONCACAF countries. Um, before we dive deep into the game, I wanted to get an idea of the build up to this game, I know that this particular game was the opening of RSL's Rio Tinto Stadium. Yeah. Um, so, can you tell me anything about the build up to this game, the pressures, anything that you remember in the week leading up to it? Yeah, I don't remember too much about the game, but the build up to the game, I certainly remember. Um, Rio Tinto was a project that started by Dave Checkets, you know, for, for a long time before we even got to kick a ball out on that field. And the whole community came together. Um, I was in the stadium watching the project develop in 2008, coming to a close. It was pretty awesome to be a part of the team then. Um, but then watching the final, the final days as the field was just pristine condition, the seats were all polished and ready for supporters to be inside the stadium. Everyone was talking about it, the newspapers, the media members, everything vamped up. And we knew it was going to be against New York Red Bulls, which was a very hot team at the time in Major yeah. League Soccer and difficult to beat. So we knew we had a game on our hands. But most importantly, we wanted to entertain the fans. We wanted them to come in and be proud of their new home. You know, make it a real coliseum that was difficult for opponents to come and play in and get results. And we made that happen from day one. I mean, it was, it was obviously a result that disappointed because we didn't win the game. But the fact that the build-up to the game was so intense, we couldn't wait to get going. And um, you know what it's like, Daniel, having been out there on the field yourself. You go through emotions, build up to game. Yeah. During the game, you're going through emotions. And then post-game, you sort of reflect. And uh, even now, I think back to the days and the hours leading up to that game. And, and it was real nerve-wracking, but it was a beautiful moment for, for Utah in general and for all the players who were a part of that Real Salt Lake team that Jason Christ and Garth Lagerie put together. I mean, you can look at the names right there. Some iconic legend names at Real Salt Lake that really stand out. Um, some experience from Europe and obviously uh, Americans who came back. It was just awesome to be a part of that project and to get out there for the first kick was, was really special. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it says a lot just, just looking at the lineups here. Um, which which are filtered through. And then, you know, I, I, I've played at Rio Tinto. It's not an easy place to go. And, and for you guys, you know, really setting the tone for that with this game, um, I think it's an important one to look back through. So I, I think what, what you're saying and, and the lead up being so important is clear because you guys came out and, and, and started the game really well. The game started really lively. Um, you'll see here, possession it, it stayed that way through the rest of the game almost 60 40 um and, and you guys really led the charge against a really good red bulls team um and set the tone for the game so uh let's dive a little bit into that and, and the start and, and how quickly uh how quickly you guys got out the gate here yeah, um let's do it and so a, a really good way to do that on the platform is to come down to the event map stuff uh and then let's look at you know the first first 20 minutes of the game when I thought you guys came out and started really well. Um, and let's just cycle through your, your build out here. And, you know, obviously this was a, an RSL team that had, um, you know, a, a young Nat Borchers at the back, Kyle Beckerman, um, you playing on the right, Chris Winger, great players coming out of the back. So your buildup was, was obviously an important part of your game. 
Um, so let's look at a, a couple of the clips as you're playing through here. Um, yep. So obviously, talk to me a little bit about the importance for you guys of actually coming out of the back and in these situations. So I'm going to freeze it here. Yep. You can see, and, and, you know, in 2008, I'm sure this broadcast feed would have looked amazing. And now that we're used to super HD everything, but <laughs> you'll see, obviously Red Bull sitting deep, you guys have it spread across the field and it's clear that you're going to try and build up here and get Kyle Beckerman involved. Talk to me a little bit about these spaces that yep. you guys want to start to exploit as you're getting higher up the pitch here. Chris Wingard is pushing up um, yep. and your build up starts. Yeah, I mean, this is a great example because you recognize that the Red Bulls are sitting back. They're not trying to put high pressure on. It's a completely different game nowadays. Now you would see a Red Bull side who would go right at you. They would chase you down. But look how deep they're sitting. There's 20 yards between us having the ball along the back line before there's even any pressure. We wanted to try and get Kyle on the ball. We wanted to get Will Johnson on the ball. We wanted to get Javier Morales on the ball. They were playing in a diamond in midfield. And it was really important for us as fullbacks, Chris Winger on the right-hand side, me on the left-hand side. Then you had the two centre-backs with Alave and Nat Borchers to try and try and manipulate the pressure from Red Bulls. We wanted them to come and get the ball from us. So that's why you see, obviously, with possession, all of the passes, a lot of square passes, a lot of passes into midfield back to the defence. And then when it's not on, as you see right there from Nat Borchers, at times, you just got to go long. You got to try and get your Mavsisian in behind because he was a warrior Mavsisian. Mm -hmm. He would run through a brick wall. And, you know, back in those days, I mean, this is 2008 before Euro went on to play for Spartak Moscow, Krasnodar in Russia, and um, obviously finished at RSL. I mean, he was making millions. But right here, this is a dude who was making like 50 grand a year. <laughs> and he was running through a brick wall for that team. He was as excited as anybody to play a part in the first game uh, at Rio Tinto Stadium. But you can see right now, if Jura gets in behind with that awesome pass from Borcher, wins a battle with his, um, with his opponent, it invites Javier Morales. If you watch the pass again, I mean, Borcher lifts his head up. He's trying to put it in the corner. Very good at pinging the ball into a dangerous zone. Battle with Masissian. But look at Javier Morales right behind. Wants to get on the ball. No one picking him up. That was our objective there. Our objective was... If we can't get one of the opponents to come and put pressure on us where we can get our diamond on the ball, we were trying to play it in behind so that Euro could fight, hopefully get lucky, win that battle, feed it to a Javier Morales where he has time, he has space. There's no more pressure because we've just we've gone past the pressure. It. We mm -hmm. just pinged it over the top of it. Yeah, and, no one's going to put the pressure on you. You got to then go a bit more offensively. And that's what we did there. And Javier got on the ball really successfully in that game. No, I, and I think this is a, a really good clip because you'll see, like we talked about, this is the first 20 seconds of the game. Yep. And it's clear here, you have all your midfielders. Kyle's trying to get in this spot here and he's checking to the ball. But really, this would just be in bounce back because it's so tight in here. Yep. So this, it's a good run. He's off the shoulder. And in the first 28 seconds of the game, all of a sudden, you're in behind. You've got space in these holes here. And you're putting them on the back foot. And this was pretty much run of the mill for the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the game. You'll yep. see again, as you guys win it back here, you go all the way back to the goalkeeper. And the same cycle will restart. So as we cycle through here, yep. we'll get yourself back on the ball wide. And you'll see, see how see, patient go, you go guys Go back, are. Daniel. Go back just a touch before I, I even get on the ball. Look, look at my head. I'm looking for the diamond. I'm looking for Beckerman, right? He's, he's there. He's my option. But can I get Javier in between the two pressured attackers? Can I get Will Johnson on the ball at wide here? Where's Clint Mathis? You know, where can I get my, my playmakers on? If it's not on, then I got to keep it safe, which is what I do. Go to Kyle. Then he gets his head up and he looks. Where's the diamond? Where's my guys? Where's my other fullback? That's what he does. He, he spreads it wide there. But it's all about options, as you know well and truly. Option number one, you want your best players on the ball as quickly as possible. The danger players, the players in the middle of the park where you've beaten the pressure. 
then they can run at that that defense that the Red Bulls have. It's all about being patient. And uh, it's difficult when you're playing opening minutes of a new stadium yeah. because you want to try and get forward and you want to obviously get in behind quickly. But Red Bulls were a well-organized machine. Yeah, no, and, and this is the second ball that, that really started to spread them. And I, I think it's important to look back here when, when you squared it to Kyle in that these are these are options in here to maybe try and get your diamond, like you said, Will Johnson's checking in here, and, and he's in a decent spot. But with as tight as they had it here, especially in the opening minutes of the game, it's good decisions from the start as you guys were playing, and it's clear you guys had this in mind with yep. getting over those those opening stadium nerves, stretching Red Bull a little bit, and not trying to overplay in these areas, waiting for them to sort yep. of adjust to those long balls so that then those spaces would open up, yep. which – Later in the half, you'll see, because you're going to get Kyle and you're going to get Clint Mathis, who, you know, people often say that the best American that nobody really talks about in the conversation with Landon yeah. and, and Christian. And so um, just getting these guys on the ball, getting these guys ticking over is so important for you guys' success. Um, so let's see here this clip with Kyle. So this one here, as you guys open it up, there you are with the decent clearance. Bump but forward. look at it. You guys are looking forward as this happens. And you'll see again, it's you're a Mosisian who's battling in here. Like you said, he's keeping everything stretched. Yep. To the point where Clint comes back. You're looking forward. You're is running in behind. And look, this is creating problems for them. Yeah. As as you play that outside the foot, that's a brilliant ball, by the way. <laughs> um, look, you guys are stepping up into this position now. And now you start to see in this clip here, and this is a, a good look at it. Mm -hmm. Look where from the first maybe two or three minutes of the game to yep. now, because they have to honor the fact that you guys are, are playing in behind and you guys are causing problems. They have to get a little bit of pressure to the ball. So yeah. now this is a perfect clip to end on with this. Look at the space that we have in here. Look yeah. at Kyle, Clint, Will. They're now open and available to where if you and Nat Borchers and Chris can get on the ball and play these quick ones in here, there's tons of space to play through here. Yeah, exactly. And they recognized that we weren't frightened to go direct because we knew that, hey, listen, if they're going to sit back deep and um, we can't get them to pressure us, we will because... I was good, obviously, playing longer balls. Nat Borchers was good playing longer balls. Chris Winger was good playing longer balls. Olavi was not good at playing longer balls, so he played it short. You'll be able to see with his possession, he kept it short all the time. Um, but it was it was great because we managed to to suck them in, and that was our game plan again. Listen, we want to we want to move them out of the place. If you go back to the shape they were in as that pass was made forward there, Daniel you can see that they're all over the place now. Their back mm -hmm. four is very, very compact because the battle was commencing with the long ball. But our diamond now has space because the three offensive players are now no longer sitting deep, clogging up that midfield. And that's the game we wanted. We wanted Javier Morales, Will Johnson, Clint Mathis, um, our danger players on the ball as quickly as they possibly could. And uh, we managed to do that just by being a bit more direct, being patient, knowing that the game plan is going to change every minute. You know, we're yeah. still so early on into the game, but finding our best players in possession, in the opposition field, in corners, in and around that diamond. And look at the bodies going forward there. It's, it's a real hunger and desire. Yeah, I mean, look at the, the space that's being created. Yours getting on the ball. Clint's getting in the box. Will Johnson's getting in the box. And this is, especially this frame here, is, is the, the perfect illustration of a team that's had to adjust. So Red yeah. Bull... They wanted to play. They wanted to sit in their low block. And first 10, 15 minutes, you guys are going long. And they've had to adjust. And when in a game, as you know, you have to adjust on the fly, it, it create, creates problems. It creates two or three minutes of chaos where you're trying to figure out the best solution on the field. And yeah. then this happens where space is opened up for you guys. Just the space in midfield and the space wide here is, is immense. And yeah. um, I think that, that's a good stopping point because – what then happens is, against the run of play a little bit, Red Bull scores a goal. Um, so you guys are pressing, pressing well, created a couple of chances in behind, um, and then Red Bulls ended up getting their goal. So let's go through 
um, the, the Red Bull goals quickly. Uh, and, and let's just have a look at it here. So. This uh, is the equalizer. Guys. Yeah. Let's go a little bit further back here. Four Red Bulls. So, again, set pieces. You know this. Uh, Mike McGee went on to become a, an MLS MVP with the fire. Um, yep. So this guy is he's dangerous on the ball. Um, talk me through exactly. Let, let's watch it through, and then we'll see. Look, he gets up. A little bit of a scramble in the box. Yeah, it, it's a decent strike. But as we go back, it was it always felt like if Red Bulls were going to break through, it was going to be on a set piece because you guys had the bulk of the possession. You guys came out of the gates really well. You had them on their back foot. Um, and this was really their, their second corner and, and the second time they, they pressed it all. Um, so a, a, as the ball comes in, sort of what are we seeing here? Wh Great stop. Where, yeah. Great stop. I mean, already you can see two of our players beaten out of position. I mean, if you look right just below the penalty spot there, it looks like it's Nat Borchers and the two Red Bull players there. And, and right in front of Nick Romando, our, our guys have been beaten there just because of the movement. But this was where Red Bulls could hurt us because even though they didn't have the ball, set plays were always going to be a problem. You play in a new stadium, confusion. It's a new environment. Um, we were all over the place because we're trying to man mark here. And mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't working very well. I was at the near post. Kyle was right behind me. The ball was played pretty deep. And it was actually a very good header and a good save from Nick Romando. Um, but the Rebels were very dangerous on set plays. And you see from the first header, the save from Romando is good. I'm sure he would have wanted to have pushed it wide. He pushed it back into a dangerous position. But right there, it's a great save. Even though there's three bodies behind Nick who would have cleared it, it's a great save. One for the, the photographers, for sure. <laughs> but every time you're a goalkeeper and you put it back into the box like he did right there, it's always a danger. And this yeah. was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Vandenberg or... Uh, yeah. Vandenberg, who, who scored the goal, you can't let a guy like that so much space uh, inside the penalty box. You can see the panic on Will Johnson right there at the top of the box. Chris Winger trying to close down. Nobody was marking him. And we just yeah. completely switched off and a lack of concentration cost us. It's a great strike, though. No, it is. And, and I think you look at it, it doesn't show it super well, but the amount of guys that are committed in the box for Red Bulls versus the guys that you have here, yeah, it, it really is. It's a five v almost an eight. So you have sort of like a, a zonal man marking hybrid here. Um, yeah. So you think you, you deal with this as the ball comes in here, but they're running in twos, they're setting picks and they just managed to get free here. And, and that can never happen. And then obviously Will's following the ball here um, yeah. as Will Johnson follows, he loses sight. And it, it's a goal that's against the run of play, but that's why set pieces are so important. And, yes. and, and that's why it's it's so important to, to be not only disciplined but just hungry because it's yep. those first headers it's it's when it's when you're getting set picks it's it's when you're you're getting a little bit physical and yeah th this is much more your language than mine because I was the guy that set pieces in an MLS game put them on the post <laughs> yeah stick them on a post yeah but play it all the way through from the corner kick again and we'll go through it quickly. We outnumber them tremendously. Will Johnson, top of the box, is ball watching, and that's why he loses his man. The save from Nick pushes it back into a danger zone, and you can see Will's face immediately. But, you know, we pick up the ball and we get on pretty quickly. We recognize, all right, we've conceded the first goal in this new stadium. Couldn't get any worse of a start for us than this, except we've dominated uh, the game. So let's get back to our possession game. We knew we had the talent to get back into the game. Um, and most important for us, I mean, at that point there, Red Bulls were, were playing in our division, right? We were playing in, yeah. in that Eastern Conference. So we had to make sure that we at some way got back into the game because we were fighting for our lives to get into the playoffs. And um, we knew in some way we had to try and get a goal. And even though it wasn't working for us with possession, we knew that set plays could be dangerous for us as well because we had real dangerous weapons there. So let's obviously goal came in the 30th minute um and I, I just want to take a look real quick and and look at the response to that um and, and kind of look at how from those first 10 15 minutes how the the midfield really really 
grew into the game. Um, and one thing about the platform is you can cycle through your your time constantly. So you can set it to as soon as the goal happens to as soon as um, yep. as soon as you want and as late as you want. Uh, and I think it's important to note here in this frame of time, uh, you can look at these passing relationships and as direct as you guys wanted to, to go in the beginning and getting Kyle involved for those 15 minutes at the end of the half, you can see Kyle wasn't involved almost at all with Kyle Beckerman in the midfield there. And, and you really want to go direct. You look at the relationships up to Movsisian here, balls played through. Um, and then you see for those last 15 minutes, you guys went through Chris Wingard on the right a lot. Yep. Um, so let's, let's just take a look through your guys' response there and the passes that he was playing forward. And you can look at those relationships. So it's obvious he, he's getting high up the pitch here. He's trying to, to push the initiative. That's a great ball. Yep. Um, switch of the field. And now you guys are 1-0 down and you're committing numbers forward. Obviously, I think – this is a, a little bit of a result of, of Kanji being the left mid for Red Bulls, brilliant yeah. going forward, but not always brilliant going backwards. Yes. Um, so let, let's let's look at sort of Chris getting involved in these situations. You can see 12 relationship passes here between him and Javi Morales. Yes. Um, as we cycle through here towards the end of this segment, Pressure, pressure, oh, no. win the Good ball. Pressure. Even if you foul, I mean, every time they get the the opportunity, was always trying to like, where can we get our our best outlet? Where's the guy who's not getting picked up? Where's the weak link that doesn't track back? We knew that we could get Chris on the ball frequently. On uh, the opposite side, it wasn't so easily because they were well organized. They had their, mm -hmm. they were they were good at tracking back. Um, but Chris Winger got well, uh, got forward really well in this game, and he had a lot of nice touches. Um, but you know. It was it was frustrating because you know we couldn't quite get it going if that made sense. Yeah, we kept going out wide and we wanted to get Javier and Clint and um, even Will Johnson people like that on the ball more, and it wasn't happening because the midfield was too clogged up. So we had to go to our easiest outlet, which was open all the time, and that was Chris. Um, and if you go to the statistics that you showed a moment ago, where over the ninety minutes you'll be able to see, go back up there, right there, go over the ninety minutes, and you'll see where the passes were now. And, and you'll see Kyle Beckerman now, right? Over the 90 minutes, Kyle got on the ball more, but where we had that 15 minute spell after the goal, they sat, they sat back and they mm -hmm. clogged up that midfield area, making sure our diamond couldn't get on the ball. And this is a great example of it. When you look over the 90 minutes, there was nothing they could do. But where we struggled over the 90 minutes was Eura was Robbie Russell, was Clint Mathis. These three attacking players were marked very, very well yeah. from the Red Bulls throughout the 90 minutes. And we were forced to play into midfield, back to defense, into midfield, back, back to, to defense, defense, into midfield, back to defense. And that's what these numbers uh, show you. And you can see right there, most passes played between players. Kyle Beckerman to me. Kyle got on the ball a lot in the game, but he had nowhere to go. So he had to come back to a fullback, you know? So that was frustrating for being our first game in a new stadium when you wanted to impress. And we knew we could have beat them three or four in the first game. But yeah. we were nervous and, and they defended very well. For sure. And, and no, that's, it's, it's one of the, um, I, I think highlights of the platform is the fact that without going through 90 minutes of video, you can sort of see those trends and see, you know, Clint, Robbie Russell, Yurim of Sisson, your, your main attacking guys not involved as much as they should have been. And that's something that, if I'm looking at this as an analyst, as a coaching, co as someone on the coaching staff for RSL, it's something that we're going to want to pick out in this game because how can we get these guys more involved? These are the guys that are going to be dangerous for us. And clearly, Red Bulls made it a problem. But you guys ended up getting back in the game. Um, end of the first half, similar goal, set piece. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's look back through that here. So this yeah, is an equalizer. It was kind of lucky. It was kind of lucky how it ended up in the back <laughs> of the net, you know, and the way it, the way it came off Olave. But this is what we wanted as well. Set plays are fine for us because we had uh, a genius in Javier Morales. He was just outstanding player. What a what a boy, what a player. Um, the cross is excellent because it gives you a chance. Gives you a chance. And and even if mean it, don't mean it, finish, doesn't matter. This ball is put into such a dangerous area. Yeah. And unlike actually the the Red Bull goal. You guys don't have a ton of separation here. This sort of looks like an innocuous nothing corner. 
Yeah. Not a lot of danger. Everyone's properly marked. Two spare guys on the edge here, but the ball drops into such a dangerous area, and then it's just about beating your man to it. Yep, exactly. It's it's that little that first battle. If it's not one on a set play, and it bounces right in front of the goalkeeper, I mean, look how far it bounces out there, right ahead of a lobby. We're talking eight yards, and he's lucky the way it finished, but he actually did a good job redirecting that yeah. on target because it's not an easy one to strike when it's on the half volley like that. He's just trying to get something on it and aim it towards goal because there's no one in front of him. Everyone's behind him. You know, the, the first battle Red Bulls lost, and that was the big one. Kyle was very important in that because the ball comes in, and even though he doesn't win the header, Kyle, he actually gets up there and causes all sorts of confusion because it sucks out three or four defenders and leaves that, that little space where Alavi can attack, and that's what we wanted. Borchers is right there. Alavi is right there. Um, Robbie Russell's right there. Our, our danger players offset plays were all in the right place. But again, it was uh, down to the delivery. If you have a good delivery, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. There's a great slow motion replay of this goal, of the first goal at Rio Tinto that RSL scored. It's out there somewhere. If you get it, find it, because it shows you the facial reaction of all of us players after he scored. It was emotion. We'd built up for years to get to this point. And we knew we had a great team and we wanted to, to score a goal in front of our fans and to see the ball go in the back of the net right there. I think it was a good finish. And there the goalkeeper was. got no chance, obviously. Yeah. But it, it was a good finish, even if he didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, you know, he beats his man. And then you just get it on goal. Get something on it and get it on goal. And, and you know you're going to be successful at some point. Either force a save, another corner, um, or just a good chance created. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's clear this was a brilliant game. and, and it stayed deadlocked. It ended 1-1. Uh, before we wrap up here, Ian, is there anything that you want to look at specifically? Maybe a couple of your clips before before we move on. You know, again, you could go back and look at my individual stats in a game like this. It's really important to, as a fullback, recognizing what your job is. And you can see by the rating, you can see by obviously the passes, successful passes. It wasn't an eventful game for me. It was just a game that went by with a lot of passes, um, successful passes, uh, because there wasn't much on. And then if you see a lot of the opportunities there where I've, I've gone long balls, those are the, the passes that are failed. You know, there's a, there's a ball over the top where it's gone out of play or uh, I've hit it to an opponent because we've been put under a bit of pressure and then immediately the pass has been forced to go long and which is where we've lost. But the simple uh, passes that are succeeded, which there was a lot of them and the majority of them, it was easy passes. You know, if there's nothing on, don't force it, give the ball, right. get it back. It was, a, it was an easy game for me. There was no pressure defensively, 1v1. Um, didn't you really have, have to make, I see, didn't have yeah. to make any challenges. You know, there was nothing coming my way. Um, and those are easy days for me, Daniel, as a fullback. Um, the hardest days are when you've got guys coming at you. But I don't even know if you can find uh, crosses that I had cross filled. You know, there wasn't many. It, it just was, I couldn't get myself into a position. Chris Winger had all of the success because his guy wasn't tracking him back. This may be the one opportunity, and I don't have many options inside the box there to put the ball into the box. Euro's already out of there, and I've just fired it to no one, you know. And it's like yeah. we were we were off our game that day, but at the same time, Red Bulls defended us well. They made it frustrating for us to get in the right positions. And uh, even though crossing wasn't a strong part of my game, I always wanted to put in two or three in a game where I gave my uh, my guys a chance. Um, but we were a passing side, and yeah, um, yeah. we kept possession pretty well. Just didn't really do much with it. Yeah, but I think this is a, a really good lesson for, for young fullbacks is coming into the game, playing your role well. You look at the amount of successful passes that you filter through here as we go through your events yeah. versus the amount of interceptions, tackles, ground yeah. duels, and, and clearances that you had to make. You were on the ball more often than not, and then in those positions, there's no need to force, keep things ticking over, keep possession, and, and try and force the issue. Um but you can see as I filtered through all your events here and your passes and your crosses, like you said, it, it wasn't a day where things were firing for you guys on all cylinders, but you kept things ticking over. You saw the most connections in the game was between you and Kyle. So yep. you had space, you had ability out there, and, and you were able to just keep the ball moving and try to continue to probe at that Red Bulls defense. And, you know, it's better to come out of this game 1-1 one, one, 
than 2-1 in, in the opening of Rio Tinto, 2-1 loss, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, because this is, you wanted to set the precedent for the stadium. So all decisions pointed towards the fact that you guys come out with a result um, and it ended up being a, a brilliant game, a really good neutral contest for me to, to go through here. Um, yeah. And I, I really enjoyed working through it. It was a, a really entertaining game and, you know, the players we had on the field and being able to, after we've developed a relationship, see you play. Yeah. It was it was good to see back in your prime was you just complain about your Achilles here now. <laughs> <laughs> Getting older now, going back and, you know, we talked off camera. I can't remember too much about games back in the day and going back and being able to break down. This was really fun for me and, and being able to watch a performance. And, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't necessarily have a great um, memory of of these awesome performances from me as as a player. I just don't. I, I can't remember too many great games. I wasn't an influential player, but I was certainly the player that was consistent and it, it did my job. And I think that this game showed a perfect example of that. And also not trying to grab the headlines. You know, no silly red cards. Right. I'm not trying to be a hero here when the game is not there. Keep the ball. Keep possession. You don't have to be a superhero in games. Um, and when it's not going your way, but this is an honor. If you look at the, the, the team that we had out there again, it, this gives you a breakdown of the performances they had in this match. And, and you can see like Alavi, obviously a high scoring uh, point there because he a rating, because he had a goal in the game, Chris Winger, because he got on the ball more on that right hand side. Nat Borch was very good at long passes, won a lot of his duels there. Kyle Beckerman, Will Johnson, Robbie Russell, average because we couldn't get him on the ball enough. Mm -hmm. You know, Kyle was playing simple passes, which is why he got a decent rating. Didn't get well on the ball enough. Didn't get Robbie Russell on the ball enough. Um, Javier Morales got on the ball frequently, but far too deep, not in influential areas. And then not a good rating for Eura and Clint, considering the quality they had, because we couldn't get them into games. And what about that for a team? I mean, that was yeah. a fabulous team right there. And we had Dima Kovalenko, Andy Williams. I mean, we had some absolute ballers on the bench who, who couldn't even get into the starting eleven for a lot of the games. And it was a difficult task for Jason Christ to pick a starting 11. Um, but it was an honor to be a part of that first game inside the stadium. And even though we didn't get the win that we wanted, we didn't lose. And that was important, especially continuing our fight to the playoffs, which we achieved that year for mm -hmm. the very first time in club history. So this was awesome, man. It was really cool. I, I love going through the product because it gives me a chance to learn about new players and how influential they can be. And I look forward to continuing to do that going forward as I build myself as an analyst now on television, often at times being able to use the product for games that I'm breaking down. It gives me a real chance, as you can clearly see, to get into the real dirty details. No, it's you know an honor for me to, to go through one of your former games and, and to speak through it, um, especially a game as historic as this in the opening of the Rio Tinto. Um, so we really appreciate you coming on, working through it, showing some of the, the B Pro platform, and of course, highlighting some of the different things in this match and, and the way that you can look at them through the lens of, of B Pro itself. Yep. Um, you know, we look forward to getting another former match uploaded and analyzed on here and we'll go through it again. Thank you so much, Ian. Daniel, I've got an idea before you go. Next time, I'm going to bring up a St. Pauli game for you. Yes. And maybe the one where I scored because that'll be a good one to break down. For the opening 30 minutes or before I got my goal, I was playing terrible. So you can really get stuck into the details of that one. And especially we can show my goal. Uh, the difference a goal makes. I'd love to go through <laughs> that. We'll put that on the calendar. Thanks, buddy.